Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the E7 extended model for today's second video. So it's going to take us six weeks out, take us to the beginning of June actually, um, with this update. And uh, we'll go from the data in a moment, have a look at mean sea level pressure, 500 mm of our height, temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next six weeks. And uh, I should get on with that for you very shortly. Just say that the uh, third video coming up today will be January Friday. We're going to have a 10 to 14 day with all regular features. And the Easter update is in uh, tonight. So it's going to be five videos uh, today. One of those crazy days. Uh, yeah, so if you enjoy all of the content on the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, so we're going to start off with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. And a big thank you to ECMWF.int for supplying uh, these charts, of course. Right, we're going to start off with week one uh, 500 millibar high tonnage, which takes us from the 26th of April, uh, this coming Monday, to the 3rd of May, Bank Holiday Monday. Uh, I'm going to have high pressure uh, in the North Atlantic around Greenland and Iceland with low pressure across northern, central and west Europe. It means we'll be pulling in the wind from a northerly or northeasterly direction into UK and Ireland. So it's probably going to be yet another cold week. Uh, let's just flip this over to the North Pole view. Uh, North Pole view. There we go. Um, so 500 millibar high tolerance for week one. Look like that. A, a ridge of above average heights through North Atlantic up to Greenland. Below average heights in across the northwest of Europe. Uh, jet stream. Could be doing something like that. So it looks pretty cool and unsettled with winds coming in from a northerly direction in the weekend. Uh, Tension anomaly is there. It's going to be cold of an average uh, for week one, 26th of uh, April to the 3rd of May. Uh, most parts of northern Europe colder than average, and the UK and Ireland is included in that. that right from the far western shores of Europe, all the way over to west of Russia, it's below average for temperature. And yeah, we're below average uh, next week, so a chilly end to what has been quite a cold April. Uh, it is dry though, so high pressure is blocking off the Atlantic. It means that uh, jet stream is kept away from us and the areas of low pressure uh, that, 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 jet, that the jet stream will bring in off the Atlantic. They're kept away from us. So uh, we come out with a drier than average week uh, next week. Um, cool and dry as it has been through April so far. Right, that's week one done. Let's have a look at week two. It's going to take us from a third through to the 10th of May. What's this one showing? Looks a bit more unsettled, this. Uh, lower pressure developing in the Atlantic. We lose the northern blocking. Uh, that's going away. Uh, we've got higher pressure towards uh, the southern part of Europe and southeast of Europe. So it'll be hot there through the Med. But over on our side of Europe, I think we may be starting to pull up something milder from the southwest. So you're probably getting a bit get a bit warmer. But this low pressure in the Atlantic could be starting to move in and bring us more unsettled conditions. 500 millibar height on me definitely looks more unsettled as well, with uh, below average heights to our north and northwest. And you could envisage that we bring in perhaps a milder or warmer southwesterly wind, but could also be uh, more unsettled with some rain off the Atlantic Ocean. Week 2 temperature anomaly is still a bit below average, actually, so it's still, still struggling to recover, uh, but it is recovering a little bit. So uh, we're going from being slightly cold average to just a little bit below average to near normal uh, there. So a slight recovery in the temperature takes place, um, but also starts to turn a little bit more unsettled to our west. You see above average rainfall appearing to the west and southwest of us. Um, so that low pressure or the low pressures bringing that rain could start to move our way. So this could be a transitional week in something a bit warmer, but also a bit wetter. Week three takes us from the uh, temporary to the 17th of May, and uh, we rapidly start to lose the signal here. We've got some lower pressure uh, to our north, otherwise there's not much to work on from a mean sea level pr uh, pressure perspective. Um, the 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that, so higher pressure to our southwest, lower pressure to our northwest. Uh, so probably just bringing in like a bit of a westerly type flow uh, with that, I would have thought. Week 3 temperature anomaly, still struggling a little bit, so about average to our east, it's a bit colder than average. Um, could be a bit of a recovery in the temperature taking place, so 
through the first half of May. Uh, no particular signal for precipitation. Right, we go through the week four, which is the 17th to the 24th of May. Again, signals remain weak. We talked about this in last Friday's uh, ECM extended look at May was proving last week to be very mysterious we called it mysterious may and uh, it still goes on this week actually with, with no particular signal there for week four from the 17th to the 24th of uh, may the um 500 bit of a height anomaly it all just looks a little bit unsettled to me though really so uh, again lower pressure just to the north you'll expect that to be bringing in like uh, a westerly type flow. So although the signals are very weak, I think the hints are there that May could be a rather more unsettled uh, month. The 500, uh, the temperature anomaly for week four. Uh, again, just to average to a little bit on the cool side, uh, really. And the precipitation anomaly, very weak signals, also a little bit drier for the western part of uh, Europe. But everything looking very, very... Uh, mysterious. Week 5, 500 millibar height. I mean, again, you see nothing, nothing at all to work with uh, for week 5. And also the 500 millibar height. So many that, again, uh, nothing to work with there. No signal. Perhaps hints of being a little bit on the cool side, if anything, uh, for week 5. Uh, temperature anomaly for 24 to 31st of May. And the week five precipitation anomaly, again, so weak, but it's hard to decipher much. Might be a slightly more unsettled week. I say that because it is slightly above average for uh, rainfall for southern England. And then we get through to week six, which is going to take us through the first week of June, 31st of May to the 7th of June. And uh, very weak signal, but perhaps some higher pressure just to our north, northeast, maybe a bit of Scandinavian high. Uh, sending the wind into the east. Of course, easterlies can be quite warm in June. It depends on the exact origins of the easterly wind, uh, really. This is how the 500 millibar height to normally looks. So, again, we've got high pressure to our north, northeast. I expect this to be bringing in easterly winds um, if that comes off. The temperature anomaly for week six. Uh, if it's going to flip over, let's see if it will. Looks like that. So again, very little signal, perhaps a bit on the cool side to our east. That's probably primarily down to the North Sea, being quite cold after a chilly winter and spring. And uh, the uh, substantial only lastly, again, no particular signal, I suppose, with high pressure towards Scandinavia, you expect it to be rather drier. So, so very weak signals. We have got a signal for the next couple of weeks. So uh, the coming week is dominated by northern blocking and looks quite cold but dry for the rest of April. Uh, then maybe a little bit more unsettled, a little bit milder perhaps, but a little bit more unsettled into the early part of May with more of an Atlantic influence. Then the rest of May, uh, as it was last week, just goes very mysterious, uh, really, and hard to decipher much. And then, interestingly, sort of weeks three, four, five actually have very weak signals. I mean, the signal for week six is a little bit strong with that Scandinavian high, because that is six weeks away. So, um, can't can't take that at all seriously, uh, really. But uh, yeah, May proved to be very, very uh, mysterious sort of month. A um, bit of an enigma. You know, so, so we'll just see how it all uh, develops as we go along. May is one of those funny months where the signals tend to be quite weak, as is September. May and September do have that sort of in common, um, you know, have that singularity about them that, that May and September tend to be two months, but always cause all sorts of problems within the model output to try and work out what they're doing and, and that's for uh, different reasons you know uh, in May everything's very very slack we're losing the temperature gradient between the tropics and the pole so the jet stream weakens dramatically and um, uh, just a case of where high pressure low pressure begins to set up so if it's up to meander around September's a, a different reason that's because you tend to have lots of uh, tropical storms and whatnot in the North Atlantic anyway that's how it's looking this week um, so do a do it all over again next uh, week. Hopefully by next week, the uh, signals for May will be a little bit more easier to decipher. We'll see what Jamie Friday has to say about May. Of course, that's coming up next. So we'll see what the Japanese and CFSB2 uh, have to say about all of this. And uh, then we're going to have uh, a 10 to 14 day for you uh, after that. And tonight we'll have our next bank holiday update. So I shall see you in a little, in a little while for JBA Friday. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.